Park, do you mind? I'm trying to study here. Park! Who are you kidding with this studying thing? It's just because mom and dad are home. I'm telling dad. I'll save you the trouble. Dad? Great, dad. You're just in time to watch 60 Minutes. A nervous energy fills the halls of Santo Domingo this morning. No, it wasn't a pep rally, nor was it final exams. It was worse. It was the annual gag dance. The dance where you say yes when a girl asks you to it. Hi, Mikey. Steve Parker? Oh, hi, Stacy. Uh, sorry. All right, so what gives? Why am I hiding from girls? It's not that these girls aren't gorgeous, or that I don't want to be invited. It's just that they aren't Tracy Lee Summers. Ah, Tracy Lee, she's crazy about me. Good morning, Mr. Lewis, sir. trying to claim me for the gag dance, sir. Coolness. You missed my drift, sir. She's all wrong for me. So immature, so kid-like, so... Come out, come out, wherever you are. Seen Jerry? Uh, he got called home on family business. Gotcha! He must have gnawed his way out. Jerry's a kid. Of course the gag dance is getting to him. I'll just hang with Mikey. He's much more mature. Hi, Mary Lou. <gasps> Mary Lou Connor. You know better than this, Mikey. Mary Lou, carry your books. Mikey, it's not going to happen. Don't do this to yourself. It's me, Mikey. Total bay. Oh, yeah. She's dying to ask me to the dance. She'll never ask me to the dance. Give her time. Yeah, right. She looks at me like I'm baking grease. Mikey was down bad. It's bound to happen when you're stupid enough to let your imagination run wild over a girl. I think Tracy Lee's gonna ask you, though. Tell me, what'd she say? I want it all, names, dates, everything. Well, in biology, she was asking me what you were doing for the dance. She's into you, Park, definitely. But she's just too shy to gag you. Great, there I was on a silver platter, and there was Tracy Lee, too polite to dig in. Well, it was back in 70. Your mom and I ended up in a McCartney concert. Paul had just left the Beatles and was with that Yoko woman. It was Linda McCartney, honey. Well, makes sense. Same last name. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to go out with her in the worst way, but I knew she'd never ask me. So what'd you do? Well, it was kind of hard. Your mom was running with a pretty ritzy crowd in those days, and, uh, you know, here I was, this young hoodlum with uh, quite a reputation for being a dangerous character. Whose life were you living? Oh, you should have seen me. Hip huggers and a, and a tank top. And no bra, I might add. <laughs> dad, Dad, please. So I figure I could stand there all night listening to George play oh, his... Oh, Paul, honey. Whatever. Or I could muster up my confidence and see if I could get lucky. And? And I walked right up to her, and the next thing I know, we were in your Uncle Steve's Chrysler, and we were... <laughs> dad, Dad, you're telling me more than I want to know here. I get the point. And the point is confidence. Confidence? Confidence! Once again, my dad ended up making no sense and complete sense at the same time. In spite of himself, he gave me an idea. So I called a few friends together. Showtime. Showtime. Let's go. Half 
a student body was hurting over the prospect of dating, I couldn't help them all. But if I could reach just one, I'd be happy. And here she comes. For some, dating comes naturally. For others, it's not so natural. Let's take a look at some typical dating situations. OK, folks, help me out here. Now, Jerry, how would you ask someone out on a date? Uh, I'd say, you wouldn't want to go out with me, would you? <laughs> Problem, Jerry. Be confident, more sure of yourself. I'm sure you wouldn't want to go out with me. <laughs> Don't think of this as just an expulsion. Think of this as a black mark on your soul. <laughs> Let's talk to some other people. Let's find out about your problems. I can't talk to girls. I can't talk to boys. Nobody talks to me. I'm a little big for my age. All of these are? <laughs> yes, Miss Musso? Shh, shh, shh. Do you hear that? The dogs. Well, they always seem to bark when you summon. No, no, no. The silence in the halls. And what does it take to solve these problems? Confidence. If you have confidence, you can go out with anyone you've ever wanted to. Someone you always wanted to go to the movies with. Colin. Someone you've always wanted to ask the gag dance. Just ask. When a school full of teenagers is totally devoid of any sound in the middle of the day, who or what has to be responsible? A certain soon-to-be-expelled student. Exactly. The solution to everything is confidence. I mean, look at Prince. Guy's a weasel. But he's got confidence, and Kim Bassinger was all over him. Arsenio Hall, come on. Guy's big gums and big buns, but he's got confidence and his own TV show. Madonna, face of a collie. But she's got confidence. Let's find him, shall we? Hmm, nobody in the quad. Cafeteria's empty. She's right on schedule. Hallway's bare. Let's try the gym. Number two, rescue breathing is like blowing up a balloon. Pinch the nose and blow into the mouth. You will see the chest rise as you exhale oxygen into it. What is Repeat this? this several times over Get me Lewis's parents. Good day, Miss Musso. Hello, Frank. By now, I'm sure you've figured out my little diversionary tactic and are about to call my parents. But let me save you a little trouble, maybe even a little embarrassment. The home of Miss Grace Musso, a high school principal who makes, oh, $38,000 a year, yet lives in a palatial $600,000 garden wood estate's home. Creative financing? That's one way of putting it. Miss Musso, what does this mean? Leave my office at once, you insignificant diphthong! As the great social commentator of our time, Bo Jackson says, just do it. Respect yourself enough to take chances. Become the people you've always wanted to be. It's who you are anyway. Come on, bring it out! Amazingly, a great synthesis between sender and receiver has occurred. I'm speaking, they're listening. It's a miracle. I've gotten through to them. Dating! I really
really went out on a limb with this dating seminar. Did it work? Only time will tell. Coolness, huh? As far as the eye can see. Parker, I was a self-possessed ice vein shrew, compensating for low self-esteem till your seminar gave me the confidence to open up to life's many possibilities. Come on, let's get lost. Funny, in the process of setting myself up with Tracy Lee for the gag dance, I'd worked a minor miracle. Looks like every eligible guy was with every eligible girl. Jerry, oh, Jerry. Oh, my God. Jerry and my sister? Mental note, notify his next of kin. Thank you, Miss Lewis. Is good. Hi, Parker. Hi, Tracy Lee. Hey, your speech was incredible. Thanks. No, no, I mean it. I mean, when you were talking to everyone, it was like, it was like you were talking right to me. I mean, especially when you said what you said about the gag dance. It just really stirred something in me. So um, I just wanted to say thanks for giving me the confidence to act on my feelings. Ah, uh, I have achieved gagness. Check that. I've achieved aloneness. I'm feeling a little better today. I'd had a good breakfast, I got to school on time, for a second period, and I'm ready for anything. Well, almost anything. Love sure is fun, sir. Mental note. Get to Jared before he gives her his bar mitzvah bonds. It's so THX. Man, the audience was listening. What are you talking about? Come on. Parker, prepare yourself. Then, Nixon had the stroke of genius to not only secretly bomb Cambodia, but, and this is so great, he mined Hanoi Harbor. Oh. oh. We've achieved the impossible. Close encounters of the third kind. I pre-chewed your Cajun chicken and make sure there are no life-threatening bones in there, Miss Lewis. Ugh. Ain't love great? Yeah, it's great. Deal, the guy's got a motorcycle. But at least he's got a motorcycle. And Tracy Lee. And Sally Cohen. My seminar taught confidence, but it didn't teach morality. Tracy Lee was being taken for a ride and the driver was an expert. I can always bask in the pleasure of knowing I coupled up the population of an entire high school. Yeah, a real pleasure. Hey, Jerry, what's up? Oh. Hi, sir. What's wrong? Well, you know how I'm supposed to be all happy and everything? I mean, let's face it. I'm your basic geek. But now, somehow, I too have a girl. Great, isn't it? Not exactly, sir. Oh, no! I forgot to have Shelly's retainer cleaned. Hey, are you having any fun? Not enough, sir. There are different types of misery, and love misery is the worst. But being in love with Shelly is misery most heinous. There's only one way to help a man in love, under the cover of darkness. Jerry. Oh, 
Jerry. Come on, Jer. Wake up. This is a bedtime story about a boy who once was shy, who once was the object of everybody's jokes, until through a twist of fate, this boy met a girl and all was well. Or so he thought. Truth was, she was eating him alive. But he was so jazzed about finally having a babe he could call his own, he didn't even know it. Until one night, this boy was visited by a secret friend who told him of the power of confidence. And this boy listened. And he listened hard. The next day, this boy went up to his girl, and with the confidence of Jose Canseco, he told her where she could stuff her overbearing ways. This boy, Jerry, is you. As you drift off to slumber, this message will repeat throughout the night. Park, you should come with us to the dance. No, I don't think so. Nobody cares, really. Come on. Yeah. You want the whole world to know that you're going to be at home alone for the biggest dance of the year? Thanks, best bud. Um, uh, I'll think about it, but thank you. Make way. Uh, Coming through. Kubiak, you big gork. Lemko, who you'll have me to answer to. Oh, no. We might have repeated the message one too many times last night. Ah, my retainer. Did you take care of it? Not yet. Mental note. Consider marketing sleep learning tape. I thought what I wanted was to be part of a couple, that happiness only came in twos. But I was wrong. Life with you is worse than living in Chernobyl. So find another victim to torture. But, but we had something. Something disgusting, but it worked. Yeah, it worked for you. Don't worry, you're still young. There'll be other men. See you around, kid. Skirt's too short. Top's too tight. Maybe your father, Reverend Tucker, would like to hear about this. Ah, Miss Musso. All stressed out, huh? Not exactly healthy for a single woman in her late 30s. All right, so Jerry's life was hanging in the balance. The way I figure it, he was a lot safer in here having learned his lesson than walking around at school having not. Sometimes you've got to be cruel to be kind. And though the ritual of gag hanging was never meant to be cruel, it was really starting to get to me. Farley's a bum. You're a legend in your own... Shower. Farley's a slimer. And you're, well, you're my own personal role model, sir. Tracy Lee's getting two time to death. And you're at the ultimate loneliest point in your life. Jerry, don't help. I'm sorry, Mr. Randall. Park, come on. What do you say? You guys are great. And I appreciate all your help. But this time, I'm really doinked. I think I need solitude solution plan A. What's that, sir? Go away. Frozen yoga with gummy bears, sir, always cheers me up. Oh, thanks, Jerry. Pencil note, see how he keeps things frozen in there. And what does it take to solve these problems? Confidence. If you have confidence, you can go out with anyone you've ever wanted to. Hey, this guy's good. Someone you've always wanted to ask to the gag dance. Just ask. The solution to everything is confidence. I mean, look at Prince. Guy's a this guy's really good. Madonna, face of a collie, but she's got confidence. Dating, not a problem. One question, how'd this get on my TV? Parker Lewis, high school homewrecker or good Samaritan? Even I'm not sure. Tracy Lee Summers radar closing in. in Five. Stay strong, Park. This girl's awesome. Four. What's the worst that can happen? Farley will just run me over with his Harley. Three. Farley's a snake. I'm not. Two. I've never seen Tracy Lee this happy. One. One. I'm destroying her only relationship in the last four years. Nice guy. Come on, Park. Talk. Yes? Look how happy she is. Who am I to tell her not to be? I, I gotta go. Park, 
Glocke. I knew. Huh? I knew he was seeing her park. I knew you wanted to tell me. I knew he was wrong. I knew I was wrong. And I knew you knew. Now we know. Parker, if you were me, who would you want to go to the dance with? Um, dance? I'd love to. Parker, were you ever going to ask me out? I wanted to, but I... Well, I'd like to recommend this little seminar I just took. Oh, and what seminar might that be? Well, the moderator was really cute, and he said, if you want something, you should really go for it. Not a problem. You know, a long time from now, long after I'm gone from high school, Students may talk about the time when that Parker Lewis guy gave a seminar that changed the way the entire school acted. A seminar that so shook the foundation of students' personalities, they were never the same again. Then again, maybe not. Two a.m. I think Mom would like to know what time you got home. And I think Mom would like to know what I found in your bottom drawer. <sighs> Not a problem. Randall? Mr. Phillips? Hello? 